Hey guys, back in old Melbourne town for today's review. Let's get down to business. Hey guys, welcome back to Whiskey Business. I'm Evan. And I'm Levi. And today is our 10th episode, which is super exciting. Who knew that two guys sitting in front of a camera um, drinking whiskey would attract so few followers? Uh, <laughs> 10, 10 episodes and 10, 10 followers. Episode, we're 10 flying. episodes and 10 followers. We're Absolutely really flying. But at the end of the day, we're having fun. We're getting some great feedback from you guys in terms of when our reviews are helpful. So thank you so much for that. To celebrate our 10th episode, we thought we'd finally come home and do a Melbourne based whiskey, which was quite honestly this distillery, which is Starwood, was one of the first ones that probably got us both into really. Yeah, it's, it's a genuine yeah. favourite. We've we've loved Starwood from the first time that I tried it. I think you had had it before yeah, me. Yeah, same thing. heard of it, but yeah. we went along to a whiskey event. We tried it and we were sort of like, this This is forged and bonded yeah. our love of whiskey and then our love of one another. So And they've done they've done such great stuff. And thank you. I just realised you said you love beer. Oh. Um, but yeah, so we're going to have fun. So in terms of the whiskies we're doing from Starwood today, we're actually doing one of their newer expressions, which is the twofold. Once again, with our focus on helping people who are new to the whiskey world, yes, we could have done the Nova, the Solera, the wine cask, like we had a lot of choices here, but we decided to go with the twofold because this is something special that they've done where they've decided to do a blended whiskey to help bring an introduction level um, whiskey to the Australian market, something that's priced a little bit lower than what you would normally pay for an Australian whiskey. So this is a blend, both of Starwood whiskies. They generally use a wheat and a rye whiskey. They say it's about a 60-40, but it is dependent on what's happening in the blend. They will change. Well, yeah, and as we found out yesterday, they have mm. a master taster that, um, that literally does sort of quality control Absolutely. on these. And, and depending on the blend and, and the flavor profiles at different points, he'll, he'll change it to make yeah. sure they get a good consistent flavor out of the twofold. Yeah, and I suppose that is one thing we mentioned yesterday. Yesterday we were in the city and Starwood had a pop-up um, bar in Maya on Burke Street Mall. If you are in Melbourne, please go check it out. They do free tastings of a decent amount of their range. It's a great way to really get to know what they're doing. Uh, it's on level four, as we found out by mistake. Took a little while to figure it out. <laughs> and um, with the Starwood guys as well, obviously the whole point of our whiskey channel is to try and get people interested in whiskey mm. and, and sort of demystify it a little bit. The guys at Starwood are fantastic. They're yeah. super knowledgeable, they're super approachable. They'll explain how things work to you, you can ask some questions. They do master classes now at the distillery. This is not an ad. We're certainly no. not getting paid for Starwood, but we're very passionate. We would love to Starwood. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're, we just yeah. think Starwood's fantastic. We're really passionate about what they so, do. Yeah. Starwood is an offshoot of the New World Distilleries who also do gins and a few other things as well, but Starwood is pretty much their premium brand. Um, this is a 40% alcohol. In terms of cask, it is finished between Pinot Noir, Cab Sav and Shiraz uh, barrels. So it goes between the three of them. So you get this really kind of rich, different fruity flavor from it as well. Uh, it also picked up the best Australian blended whiskey at the World Whiskey Awards 2019, which sounds impressive until I asked Levi, Levi, what other blended Australian whiskeys can you name? Possibly none. <laughs> I thought maybe that was a trick question. That there's a trick lot. No, there you go. That, that's the same thing I thought. Not to take away from the award because they definitely deserve it with this one. And I think you, you can only beat the competition that's put in front of you. Absolutely. So they did that. And to be honest, I think we've talked enough, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. It's really light. I think it's the, really the, light. the Australian whiskies, we've talked a little bit about yeah. this before, but they're kind of very distinctively, generally um, matured in red wine type of barrels yep. and it does have a certain type of flavor. It's quite dark. We get all the same sort of flavor Absolutely. profiles on the nose and yeah, Australian whiskeys are great in, in general and especially this one. Ooh, really wonderful. Great yeah. texture. Really great texture. Full body. Really clean, just really nice, easy to drink. Beautiful flavor. I love also. that it kind of does a, um, a quick rise and fall. It's just yep. like, it hits the tongue, then you get a bunch of heat and then just dissipates back into nothing. Yep. So it shows you, hey, I'm alcoholic, but I'm not gonna stick around for it's, a long time. It genuinely is one of the smoothest, easiest drinking whiskeys you will get. Oh, absolutely. But still manages to capture a whole bunch of different flavor profiles. So that's got a lot of the red wine flavor in there, a bit of pepper, some fruitiness. I'm getting a little bit of vanilla on the tongue as yeah. well. 
just at the very, very tip, just a little bit of sweetness to kind of help balance out that that heat and that kind of fruitiness from yep. the red wine barrels. I like, I would say a lot of that probably comes from the caramelization of the barrels. They are lightly, very, very lightly charred um, or steamed. Like they don't go full on char. For those who don't know, I think we've discussed charring before. A little bit, but let's do it. Bit. But so pretty much when a distillery will get a barrel, if they want to develop a particular color or a particular flavor, they will go on the inside of a wine barrel or something like that, take a blowtorch to it and just char it. And by doing that, they are caramelizing the sugars on the inside and imparting that flavor and color to the whiskey. So generally the darker the whiskey you are looking at, the more caramelization that has more than likely occurred, yep. unless they've gone out of their way to use a very specific barrel yeah, from an alcohol to get that color, and so, we know we know very specifically with Starwood they don't add anything to no. change the color or to change Absolutely. the flavor profile. So this is quite a dark whiskey, as you guys can possibly see. Um, hi, Archie, another one of our whiskey cats back in yeah. the room. Yeah, I think he's the one who's done the most cameos so far. He loves the camera. He does love the camera. He's a very pretty, pretty man. Very pretty man. Um, so you're just going to sell yourself there? All right, then. <laughs> really distracting us here. We'll get back to the whiskey. Um, so yeah. a little bit of caramelization, but it turns out as well as lightly charring, they will sometimes steam the barrels as yeah. well. That does it, as far as I know, that doesn't add as much color, but it does heat up um, the inside and just make it a little bit more. Well, thank you for doing the water. Um, but yeah, just off the top of the first tasting, just absolutely lovely. In case you can't already tell, this is going to score very well. Mm. Really light on the nose when you. It add is the very water. light on the nose. Like it was, it wasn't heavy on the nose what? when you first began. Just adding the water really does kind of. I think it it's um. Usually you'll try and use the nose to get an idea of what you're going to get out of the flavor of the whiskey, mm. and and that's what it's supposed to be for. Yeah. The really interesting thing with Starwood is if you had the if you just had the nose, you would probably assume that it's quite mild. It's not the right yeah. word, but it doesn't have a really strong flavor profile. But yeah. when you do drink it, it really does have a very Absolutely. very strong flavor profile. It's very distinctive. That, the water actually amped up the heat a little bit. Like it kind of hit me in the nasal passages, yeah. which it did it the first time around. It's it's definitely in the the warmth in the chest is there a little mm. bit more oh, yeah. water, which is interesting. Which is really interesting. The flavor dissipated a little bit, not horribly like that. The fruitiness is still definitely there. I Absolutely. can't taste the vanilla as much now. It's. I, I think with the water added, mm. it's not as sweet. No, that no, seems to be really the only thing, thing that it takes away, away from everything else. It's, mm. it's still pretty good. Uh, probably say that's gone well. <laughs> um, <laughs> probably say, and I will generally drink everything on the rocks. I think this one, um, the difference between the the neat versus with a little bit of water in there, mm. I definitely prefer it neat. I prefer it neat. But I think well. the water doesn't really do no. a great deal for it. Mm. Anyway. We'll see how it goes. Once again, now next to nothing on the nose. Yeah, it's just cold air now with a bit of ice in there. Mm. That's that's really great chill. Yeah, I like it chilled. I like all my whiskey chilled. So. You lose the heat a little bit. You do, but you still get the nice flavour. You still get that really nice fruitiness. I feel a little bit of the sweetness actually come back. Yeah. Just a tiny, tiny amount. No, no. near as much as when it was. No, there. absolutely not. But that's, I mean, Starwood and, and a lot of whiskeys you'll probably see. I think Starwood would be one of the very few that you will see um, the sort of tasting notes on mm. it. And generally you drink it and you get all of those tasting oh, notes. Absolutely. It's, it's, not, it's not ambiguous. Nothing's up for debate no. here. Starwood does what it does and it does it incredibly well. Mm. And that's just a really good powerful combination yeah. of flavors that mm. works really well gives you a bit of everything love yeah. the sort of combination and i'm not a huge red wine drinker but you can no. definitely taste the flavor oh, of the red wine in there and it's you really get the dryness good. of the pinot and the shiraz yes. i suppose the cab sabs are pretty dry whiskey as well dry wine, dry wine. rather <laughs> yeah yeah it's it just yeah it's like, there's not enough plaudits for it it's a no. wonderful whiskey it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, a really great really flavor really profile whiskey. That is the sort of thing that works incredibly well for a beginner and also works incredibly well for someone that drinks a lot of whiskey oh, because the complexity of flavor, the way that it all sort of, I think also the way that like the journey of the whiskey, mm. once the flavor profile actually hits your tongue, that it doesn't, yeah. doesn't mix a lot of stuff up. It sort of runs through a really yeah. interesting and distinct profile. It works really, really well. Now, I don't know if I said this before, it's a 40% alcohol whiskey. I think it hits a little bit harder than 40% in that first... Yeah. Go, but then it peters off and just becomes 
a really nice aftertaste and doesn't really do that. And that's what you were talking about, yeah. that profile, that it sort yeah. of hits and kicks and gives you a bit of everything and then mm. mellows out and gives you all those wonderful flavors. I mean, I like it with ice. I would still pro- probably prefer to drink it neat. Like, just because I think having that little bit of vanilla on the tongue, as yeah. well as that roller coaster of the heat, is just such a lovely drinking profile and really makes you appreciate what they've done and how they've balanced it out and sort of stuff like that. Yeah, and like we always say it, drink whiskey however the hell you like, but definitely try something like that that does have quite a yeah. lengthy flavor profile, if you mm-hmm. like, that does does quite a bit and sort of has a nose and then a front end and then a back end. Mm. Um, try it a couple of different ways because yeah. you are going to get a little bit from each different way that you try it. Absolutely. And great in, in any way. Yeah. So, price-wise, $69.95. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, I think, Rangers. although if you buy it directly from Starwood, it actually comes down to 65 Like, so you can buy it from their pop-up shop, or you can just pretty much head over to their distillery in Port Melbourne and go buy it from them. And if you haven't been to their distillery in Port Melbourne, please go. It's absolutely incredible Mm -hmm. like they've done a really really great job of making like a great space for people to go learn about whiskey you have a good drink it's not like a little crammed area there's a nice big open area to go in as well well i think it's really good with starwood that they've understood the market in australia is um booming but Mm. also still pretty fresh you know a lot of people that don't know a lot about whiskey and they're trying to figure it out so they've got a really wonderful balance of they know whiskey and they know Mm. what they're doing but they're also very approachable and they're not they're not making it hard. They're not becoming part of the in crowd. It's no. just, we do this. We think it's great. Absolutely. We'd love for you to come and share that journey with us. Mm-hmm. And it's fantastic. Um, scoring wise. Now I got in trouble the other week because I gave something a nine. What did I give a nine? Yeah. The tealing stout The tealing stout cask. And that was 79? 79. So that's better. Yeah. For me. I'm, I'm going to give it a nine. Not a 10. Not a 10. Prefer the tealing stout cask. Probably around that price point, yeah. Mm, but I will say, this is something I'm probably always going to have a bottle of. Uh, absolutely. Like, that, that's a staple. That's a staple. That's yeah. something that's, as soon as I finish a bottle, I'm just going to walk down to Dan's or go over to Starwood and buy another bottle straight away. Well, and I think that the appeal of it, on top of the fact that it's just a wonderful whiskey, a yeah. really, really good whiskey, is at 70 bucks. Yeah, 65 to 70 bucks. Why wouldn't you why have a bottle you? at all times? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I've got my decanter has, I won't say what it is, but it's something pretty cheap in there. <laughs> it's $20 cheaper than that. Exactly. And you could put that in your decanter. I know. And it could just be I mean, and even if we take it down to um, compare it against one of our favorite blends, which is the Naked Grouse, which is about 20 bucks cheaper. Yep. Once again, I would probably still have a bottle of this over the Naked Grouse. Yep. Actually, to be honest, I'd probably have both. both. <laughs> so. I, you're going to dispute this with me. I think yeah. that's fantastic. I yeah. don't think that there is anything in that price range that is better, but yeah. I am going to give it a 9.5 yeah. out of 10. Because <laughs> I'm an asshole. You, you are so... I know exactly what I'm doing with my scoring. It'll all come together in one of our future episodes. But I will say that yeah. I think that stays at a 9, at around a 9, yeah. even if you say compare it to 120 130 $140 whiskeys. It's that good. I mean, even if you look back to a couple of weeks ago when we did the Nicker Premium Blend, which is double the price of this at a minimum double the price yeah. if not far far exactly. more than that whereas every single minute of every single day I will tell someone go get a bottle of that yep the nicker I wouldn't even tell you to try a glass <laughs> yeah we didn't we did it, like it wasn't that. it wasn't great um, but the twofold I don't think you'd be losing anything by investing in a bottle it's just so really well done if you really want to try it um, before you go instead of going out and buying a glass literally go talk to Starwood yeah their pop up in um, Maya will be there till December 30th I think they said for us memory yeah it's a so sort of Christmas got, thing that they're yeah. doing so you've got so much time if you live in Melbourne to go down and check it out they've got a few other things there including one new expression which we are going to be reviewing probably next year which was a Star Wars finished in a toy port cast, which we got to try, which was absolutely magic. And, and perfect for this time of year. Absolutely. Christmas. And they also had a um, a limited run 
Distiller's Edition. Distiller's Edition yeah. that you can personalize the label for, which was absolutely incredible yeah. as well. Cool little gimmick. Absolutely. So there's some really, really cool stuff out there. Definitely if you're in Melbourne, check out Starwood. If you're anywhere else in Australia, I'm sure you can find Starwood somewhere at a local bar or anything like that. Well, a month ago, I was uh, in Newcastle yeah. and they had the whole Starwood range up there and the guys up there all knew it back to front and inside out. So they're doing really great stuff. Very, very well and if you just want a bottle, Literally, Dan Murphy's has them for sixty nine ninety five. We usually say go and buy a glass before you buy a bottle. In this instance, go buy a bottle. You're not yeah. going to go wrong. No. Um, if, and if you see it when you're out, uh, yeah, get a glass of it. It's, it's, it's just absolutely, absolutely lovely really stuff. Good stuff. I would say, in my opinion, buy a bottle of this for home and when you're out, go with the Nova or Solera instead. <laughs> the Solera is fantastic. <laughs> the Solera is fantastic. Um, but other than that, like it's just absolutely incredible. We highly recommend this as just a staple for your whiskey collection it's not super expensive it's really easy to drink and who cares what other people think at the end of the day drink for what you like and this is something we feel a lot of people are definitely going to like 100 percent. it'll appeal to everyone whether you're a seasoned whiskey drinker or a beginner and if you don't like it it's probably the only time that i'll say this you're probably wrong <laughs> that's fantastic <laughs> uh levi's uh expression of Thing doesn't really match mine if you don't like it well that's your choice are you doing a whole i don't speak on behalf of <laughs> no no i like, absolutely don't. speak on behalf of whiskey <laughs> business and i stand by it if you don't like star and you don't like two fold you are wrong it's the only time that i'll get my high horse in this uh, this whole show that we do i'm done now i've, okay. I've had my rant Okay, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed that review and Levi's little rant there at the end. That was a little bit off script. A little bit. Um, so, really, it's just about what's going to be happening next week. So, Levi, what's the plan? We're staying in Melbourne, which is pretty exciting. And next week, we're actually doing something really cool. Yep. So, Starwood's um, done a range of premix cocktails. Mm. And we are going to do a banger extravaganza <laughs> double episode of cocktails. So, we're going to make sure that we uh, fancy ourselves up and fancy our glasses up. Absolutely. We're going to review a few of those, which is going to be really exciting. But, yeah, next week will be a double episode. So, on Monday at 5 o'clock, make sure that you set some time aside. Uh, get yourself a nice, nice warm, cozy blanket and sit Absolutely. down and you can watch us drink some cocktails. No problem. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Other than that, we'll see you next Monday at 5 o'clock. And as always, make sure to keep your business whiskey. Thanks, guys. <laughs> see you later.